What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Thursday. It's October 28th. Markets just closed just over 10 minutes ago. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Better yet, I hope you're all having a fantastic week. Another day filled with opportunity has come and gone. We got one more day left in October for the trading week. Halloween's coming up on Sunday. We're about to be going into November. Next up, we got Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. New Year's. 2022 is just two months away. Two months away. That's crazy. So this year flew by. Another year in the books, pretty much. Getting that time in, that experience in, showing up every day, it's going to pay off down the road. So let's talk about what popped off today. There were a lot of stocks that ran today. A lot of stocks. To close things out for today, just to get it out of the way, I'm closing out the day in the green. I traded two stocks today. Really was just kicking back today, not really doing too much, just taking it slow. This morning we streamed in the Discord. Just been hanging out, not forcing anything. We're at the end of the week, end of the month. I'm trying to play it safe. So two trades. I traded HCWB, made 1500 bucks. Then I traded HUDI, and I lost 800 on this one. With HUDI, what I was trying to do, this thing I've been talking about it all week, and even last week I was talking about it, the opportunity this stock has been giving. Going into the close, I was thinking of taking a swing on it, but then my senses kicked in. And I said, dude, what are you doing? It's not worth it. Get out of it. So I cut it. I chickened out. I just can't swing trade a stock that's been up for two and a half weeks, 16 days straight. If this thing crumbles and falls apart, it's going to crumble hard. But there's still opportunity on HUDI, day trading opportunity. So let's talk about HUDI real quick, just to get it out of the way. I've been talking and talking and talking and talking about HUDI. This thing has still not gone euphoric yet, and it's still holding trend. And it's just been setting up, breaking out, setting up, breaking out, and even... Going into the close here, it's still looking good. Let me get my marker. So we got a nice big triangle right here that it formed. Broke out from that. Forms another big triangle here. Broke out and then it failed quickly. But then it came back and reclaimed. And this is could be sh squeezing shorts here. As they looked at this as a failed breakout and it started to crumble, shorts get in and get ahead of themselves. And then it comes back up and it's been just lingering around just to below that $30. This thing could easily rip $40, $50, $60, $70 even. Who knows how far this could go, honestly. HUDI, the float on it is super low. It's only a 3 million float. Let's see. Average volume, 5 days. Where is it? It's 2.9 million. So every day on average, they're rotating that float once. Every single day. The more it pushes up, more people get eyes on it. More people jump in on it. 
And even the way it's set up here today, got your nice rounding action going on here. Nice even little cup and handle going on as well. All day it just slowly creeped up. Creeped up and creeped up to that 28 and after hours now it's hitting 28.50. So it's just a matter of time. Matter of time before the top blows off on this and it just explodes to the upside. But I will say as well. HUDI, once the cookie crumbles, this thing is going to fall, and it's going to fall hard. There is, There will be no buying a bounce on HUDI. Now let's take a look at another example, HX. You guys all remember HX. This thing did the similar thing to what HUDI is doing. And every single day when we've been doing these recaps, I've been comparing these two. And when HUDI does get that blow off and explodes up, I'm going to have all of these videos documenting. I've been calling it out and saying it. HX trends up. Trends up. We get that explosion up over 10 this thing ripped all the way up it hit a high of $25 a share after it exploded after it exploded this thing crumbled and fell apart and it's still to this day getting driven all the way back down to where it came from all it was was just an epic big pump HX just kept trending and trending and trending, got that euphoric explosion on it, and then it crumbles, and now it's getting driven down even more. Now, just to give you guys a picture real quick, let me find it. It's going to be in my Discord pictures right here. This is why we study these patterns. This is the famous euphoric chart. The more a stock goes up, media starts talking about it, enthusiasm, greed, delusion, and then denial, return to normal, bull trap, fear, all the way down to where it came from. So optimism, excitement, thrill, euphoria, that's your maximum risk. That was me today when I jumped in on it right before the close. Like, yeah, I'm going to swing this overnight. And then my senses kicked in like, yo, what are you doing? No, no. So I bailed out of it. I don't want to be that dude buying at the top. I'd be. The stupidest person in the world. Because what if it gaps down to $20, $15? You know, that's a $20 per share loss. That's going to hurt. So HUDI, we're going to continue to still keep tabs on it. Now let's move on to what else popped off today. We had a lot of stocks quickly pop up. And slam down. HCWB. This stock had insane volume today. 171 million in volume on HCWB. So let's break this down real quick. Volume was at 171 million. That's a lot of volume on a stock like this. The float on this stock, which is also the supply, 
is at 9 million. So 9 million divided by 171. That's around, I'm going to do an estimate, 13, I'm going to say 13 times. I'm not good at, I'm not good with math. So 13 times rough at rust at rough estimate they've rotated that float so 13 times they've rotated this float and it didn't go parabolic or explode and shoot up higher over that seven dollars that's when you got to go into your SEC filings and find out if they have any warrants they could exercise, registrations. Are there any insiders inside the company that could unload on a stock like this? Let me pull something up real quick. So HCWB, HCWB, it had the, the opportunity, it did, but it just, it just didn't happen. So something like Flash SEC, this website here, you got to pay for it monthly, but this is a tool that I consider helps me save money it's not going to make me money it's going to save me money now i'm not affiliated with these guys they're not paying me to promote their website or anything but this is a fantastic tool to have especially if you're a swing trader so it digs into the sec filings for you and it pulls out all the information you need like the float on it, the short float percentage, insider ownership, how many institutions are holding it. You can see how much working capital they have, cash, operating expenses, estimated months left of cash. They have about eight months left of cash. And then you could see here, there's conversion prices. They don't have any. Warrants they can exercise, none. Liquidity and capital resources. So management expects to incur additional losses in the future to conduct product research and development and recognize the need to raise additional capital to fully implement its business plan. HCW Biologics intends to raise capital through issuance of additional equity financing and or third-party collaboration funding. However, if such financing is not available to adequate levels, the company will need to reevaluate its operating plan and may be required to delay the development of some of its prop products. Development of some of its products. <clears throat> so they're telling you right there. They're in desperate need to raise additional capital to fund what they got to do. Continue going down. Active shelves, none. Active registrations, at registrations, none. I can't talk. Active registration statements. So we got one that expires here in 2024. Remaining value, 8.4 million shares. Then they have this guy, E.F. Hutton. That one's complete. For 56 million. 
Then this one. Shares outstanding. 12.8 million. And then you can go through here and read some of their recent press releases that they've come out with. See, this is the boring stuff that people don't want to learn about and better prepare themselves before running into a brick wall with HCWB. It had the volume. For sure, it had the volume. It just could not break up over that $7 and run. It tested that $7. Let's see here. So it tested it once, twice, three, four, about five, six times. It tested that $7 and just could not break through. And as the day progressed, Look at volume, just retrace on it. You can draw a line out. Volume is clear as day, just retracing and going lower. People are giving up on it. Other names are popping up and taking off. So whenever you have a stock, it's not performing. And you have other stocks in the background. They're pushing up and performing. You got to tell yourself, hey, all these other stocks that are popping off and performing, it's going to take away from this stock and people are going to bail out on this and then they're going to go over to this other stock that's pushing up effortlessly and running. Now, I did trade HCWB. And made 1500 bucks on it. Get in. Get out. Be done with it. That's what I like to try to preach and teach here. You want to. You don't want to overstay your welcome. Is what I'm trying to get at. If you were able to successfully trade a stock. And make money on it. You did your job. You're done. Right? There's no need to try to sit there. Be a greedy pig. And take it for everything that it's got. Because who knows, you could run into that one bad trade that takes back a huge portion of your profits. So, failed follow through on HCWB. We had LCID go on an epic run today. And this is what I'm talking about right here. When you have a stock. That's running up and performing like LCID. Everybody's going to gravitate and go to this. Because they're looking at LCID and saying, man, this stock is an ATM machine. It just keeps pushing up and up and up and up. From $28. Runs all the way up to thirty nine fifty. That's a good eleven dollar, almost twelve dollar run to the upside. Beautiful, and look at it, how much volume came into this bad boy. Literally, every on average, every one minute candle had just about eight hundred thousand in volume flowing into it. That's a lot of money flowing into a stock. Look at all that right there. That huge volume explosion when it just starts to ramp up and peak out right here. Because everybody gets excited when stocks push up higher, right? People love going after stocks when they're pushing up to new highs. Give me one second, guys.
I see a lot of people make the mistake when they're new. They don't fully understand the stock market yet. They don't fully understand how to read charts. And they don't understand how stocks move up and down. They jump around in too many different areas. Like they'll dabble in small caps. And then they'll dabble in large caps. And then they'll want to dabble in futures. And then they'll want to dabble in options trading. I'm going to tell you guys, if you're new, you have a year. You're In your first year, you're a rookie. Stay far, far, far away from options. It's going to destroy you. And then it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And then you're not even going to want anything to do with the stock market because options hurt you so bad. Options trading. You can be profitable with it, but options trading, it's designed for you to fail. Option decay, time decay. Aba says, yes, sir, I made 60 bucks on DBGI in the morning and didn't touch anything for the rest of the day. I learned the lesson to not overstay my welcome many times in the past. Locking profits is key. It sure is. We all go through it. We all do. Especially... If you trade pre-market and you're successful and you made money before that market even opens, you get into that mindset like, awesome, I'm up $500 and the market hasn't even opened yet. Now I got a cushion I can start building off of. This isn't, you're, you're in that mind state of, I, it's just, You've made it so fast and you still have the whole day ahead of you. And you get into that mindset of greediness. I want more. You gotta be careful with that. Really do. Everything you do, you have to question. Everything. You gotta take a step back and ask yourself. Always do a mental check. Take a look around as well. How many people do we see come and go in this game? A lot. Because people can't stick to their rules. They don't have a game plan. They think that this is a get rich quick scheme. They don't have a passion for this. They want to start making money now. They lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. And after six months or one year of just losing straight, they don't have, they don't have it in them anymore to continue because they've just been beaten down so much. They're like, what am I ever going to get this? There's no point. Guys, it took me two and a half years to stop losing money consistently. I lost my ass off for two and a half years, but I did not quit. I wanted to. Hell yeah, I wanted to. And I'd question myself, am I ever going to get this? But I'm telling you guys, just do not quit. You gotta just roll through it 
got to. There's a reason not everybody's going to succeed at this because they all just give up too early. Learning this, it just takes this game. It just takes time. It does. It takes time. This isn't something that you can say, hey guys, you just got to look out for this. And it, everything will be alright and you'll be making money. It's not about learning that one strategy that's going to consistently make you money. It's not. It's a, all, all the answers lie within you. Period. Why owe you? 90% of people fail in the stock market. And then you got these huge YouTubers out here. I'm not going to name any names. But they have 800,000 subscribers. 90% of people fail. Just because somebody has a lot of subs subscribers does not necessarily mean they're good. You know how much YouTube pays you? For 800,000 subscribers. They pay you a lot of money. A lot. I can attest to that for sure. My small channel. And it's monetized. Every month. I only have 10,000 subscribers. And I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just trying to state the statistics. For 10,000 subscribers. Every month. I'm bringing in just from ad revenue alone 500 bucks a month. Just from that, imagine what 800,000 subscribers are bringing in for ad revenue. That's a lot of money. We're going into the world where everything's digital. You don't have to do hard labor work anymore. Technology is taking over the world. Internet is taking over the world. I was just in line at the shopping store yesterday. There was literally an old, older guy behind me complaining <clears throat> that he was being overworked at his job. Working six, seven days a week, 12-hour shifts. Because nobody wants to work. And he and his simple he, he kept complaining about everybody being lazy and nobody wants to work right now because they want to be lazy and collect that free money. And I'm standing in front of him and I'm thinking to myself, like, no, dude, everything's going online. Everybody's making money on the internet. Times are changing. You're just not realizing that. So if you don't adapt, you will get left behind. Remember that, guys. Look at all the stupid ways we can make money now. People are buying NFTs. Paintings that aren't even physical real. Just to say they own that image. For stupid amounts of money. All these different Bitcoins are popping off. And you can't even own a physical copy of it or anything. Everything's going to streaming. It's a, it's a wild world we're moving into. Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg just put a press release out today. They're changing their name to Meta. And he gave a brief introduction of what the company is looking to do in the future. And it's pretty eye-opening stuff when you sit there and think about it. All the futuristic stuff that we're about to be getting into. And then in, what, 2030, is it? There's there, They won't be making any more gasoline vehicles. Everything's going to be electric. So times are changing, you guys. Times are changing. How bad do you want this? Ask yourself that. I wanted this really, really, really bad. 
I told myself, I will be a successful day trader. I will. There is no, man, I want to be a successful day trader. No, I told myself, I am going to be a successful day trader. Nobody's going to be telling me what to do. I don't have to worry about showing up to work every day. I want that lifestyle to do what I want when I want. And thanks to the stock market, it has opened my eyes and doors to the unlimited possibility that's out there for you guys. That's why I'm here every day making these videos and these recaps and doing all of these long motivational speeches and rants because I want to pump you guys up and get you guys going. I have a 16-year-old kid in my Discord, has a head on his shoulders, and is such a bright young man. And everybody can see the potential that this kid has. And to be a part of that, to help guide that young man into a successful future, and he sees it, that's an amazing feeling. Amazing. So how badly do you want it? Ask yourself that. If you want something bad enough, you'll get it. IFRX. Another small cap stock offering opportunity today. Getting a nice squeeze from $3.50. All the way up to $5. There was a lot of small cap stocks that popped off. A lot. Let me go through it real quick. VAR was another name that popped off right at the end of the day. From $10 to $16. Bucks. That's literally, like, look at this. This is crazy. Like, zoom out on this. So, nothing at all is going on with this stock. No volume whatsoever. No price action really going on every single day. Nothing really going on. And then out of nowhere, this stock just explodes and runs up. And look at all of that volume. Just rush into it. Right there. On average, about 225,000 in volume is flowing into this stock. So look at it like this. When you have a stock, no volumes going on with it at all, right? The whole stock market, it revolves around supply and demand, right? You need volume. For price action to occur. For price fluctuation up and down. <clears throat> so when you have a massive amount of volume. Hit a stock. It's like a lightning bolt. Coming in and striking the stock. And price action just explodes. That's what happened with VRAR. And that's why you see traders out here. They'll use stock scanners. To pick up stocks because they have them calibrated for it's like some of them it can get ridiculous like every one minute if volume crosses over 250 300 percent it's average one minute volume and is making new highs alert it to me something like that. Then it goes off on all of these trader stock scanners real time. Then they alert their community. Everybody bum rushes this stock. And this is what happens right there. From $10 rips to $16.50 all within, let's see, it started at, 2.30, and it topped out at 
1500 so a half hour 30 minutes it took for this to run up six dollars and fifty cent and all you got to do is get a small piece of that move just a small piece of it like right there boom out of that whole move that whole move right here just a little small sliver of the pie that's it a thousand shares you make a dollar real quick on that that's a thousand bucks that's that's insane that's opportunity that's why i love these fast moving stocks you can make money so fast and then you can get out and you can sit on your cash until the next opportunity arises. That's, to me, that sounds great. It's like uh, fishing. You're just chilling, hanging out, waiting. That's the hardest part, though, is waiting. Waiting patiently for that opportunity to come along. Especially right when that market opens. Because you see these stocks gapping up pre market. And pre market, they're running. They're running effortlessly. They're ripping up a dollar fifty and then exploding up another two dollars. And you're you're starting your adrenaline starts to go. And you're like, man, look at this thing and how much opportunity. I'm missing out on. And all that excitement builds up. And then psychologically, we all know at 930 that bell rings. So until that time leads up to 930 and that bell rings, we've gone, built up our excitement. It's like watching a trailer for a movie that you're really interested in. and Every single time that trailer comes on, you get excited and you can't wait. October 31st, this movie comes out. You're like, oh man, two more days. I'm about to go see that. It's about to be lit. And then it's a movie you really want to see. You're a super fan. Same thing applies here to the markets. All that excitement builds up. And then right at 9.30, and then... All you hear is ding, 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 ding. And all these scanners are going off. HCWB, HCWB. You see other people in the Discord call it out and talk about it. Your hand's on the trigger. You hover over that buy button. You click it, and then you instantly regret that decision as the stock tanks down in a downside halt. And it just dropped off $2 a share. You just let your emotions take over and you trade it. It's a big problem a lot of new traders go through. I did it all the time when I was new. Right out of the open, I would be buying because on YouTube, everybody be saying, I, you want to trade the first 30 minutes of the market open. And seeing these stocks, how much they could rip up right out of the open. All that excitement, you'd be like, we've seen some crazy moves right out of the open. Look at how much HCWB ripped up right out of the open. From 450. 450 it ripped all the way up to 650 and seven dollars that's a big move all within the first 10 minutes but it can also fall and crumble on you right out of the open they can fall just as hard Let's see if I can find an example. Like, look at this one. H-U-D-I. Right out of the open, 
it perks up here to 23 2250 and then look at that drop right there from 2250 all the way down to $18 that's a $4 per share downfall that's a lot some of the easiest money is going to come along half an hour after that market opens DKKT, this one, it really did try. It was a good bounce on it, up to $32. It really played around at that $30. This was that epic runner back a few days ago, running from 11 all the way up to a high of $55, $56 a share. And after these stocks run, They crumble and fall pretty hard, don't they? But the bounces on them, if you patiently wait for them, are phenomenal. You can make a lot of money. So if you miss out on that first big upside move, don't worry. There's still plenty of opportunity to be taken advantage of on the way down. You just have to patiently wait for it. So it looked like. BKKT was trying to bottom out here at 22, but it stalled out at 25, and it continued down even lower, down here to $20. Now, that's a nice, to be fair, that's a nice psychological level. It even sounds good, $20. So everybody gets on the same page. 20 bucks is support. That's the way I look at it. Everybody gets on the same page. Everybody sees it's at 20. So everybody's like, all right, let's try to hold this up at 20 bucks. You got to think in ways of mass psychology. What's everybody, what's the smartest move or the smartest play? That everybody could get on the same page and work together to get this thing going. So from 20 bucks, rebounds all day up here to $30. That's a good $10 run. But $30 up here was a lot of resistance. It even tried ripping up and holding over 30 just before the open. And it was really battling at that $30 right here. That $30, I'm going to draw a line. Right there. So I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can. That looks about straight. This is why it's important to focus on these levels. How is a stock reacting to these price levels? Right out of the open, it rips up to 30. Couldn't hold over it. Failed miserably. Failed miserably right there. Comes back down. Regroups, rips back up over 30, and at one point it did hold up over $30. But then it crumbled right back down below it. It really couldn't even hold above it. It just couldn't. All right, so AS, YS. That was a gradual good mover today. CYH. 
from 11 to 12 25 that was a good move MPAC just a real quick pump and dump from 10 to 1150 just not enough volume came into it compare that volume to the other one that we were just looking at what was it um i already forgot the name of it the one that rocketed up six dollars a share shout out to rome in the chat today he called out wbx this one was a good one he noticed it was in play recently levels out right here at 1450s so today gets a nice rip right out of the open from 1450 to 18 dollars that's a good four dollar per share rip to the upside comes back down hovers all below vwap here reclaims vwap Keeps holding VWAP at a nice $16. And from 16 this thing ramped up to $19.40. Beautiful right there. Beautiful. That's These are the types of plays that I like to look out for. That's a nice $3 move right there. All within 10 minutes. That's good. I love trading these stocks that don't really have a lot of volume. It's not overcrowded. Because if you've noticed, the stocks that are overcrowded with volume are the hardest ones to trade. Because you just have so many different personalities, trading strategies in on these. It just leads to randomness. That's why I try to stay away from them. But I did trade HCWB today. I did. But if you're in the Discord, you know me. I'm always trading stocks that nobody else is talking about. OCGN. This was a recent mover a few days ago. Nice move today from 950 to 1050. So a nice $1 upside. Got a nice explosion here in the morning from 950 up to 1050. Just rips a dollar. Boom like that. Beautiful. Did we have yeah, this morning today, when I put the watch list out, every single day in the Discord, I put the watch list out for you guys. Stocks that I'm watching going into the open. OCGN, right there. I was also watching LCID. So OCGN, after that explosion, gets a nice pullback, consolidation, and from 10, gets a nice run up, 50 cent to 10.50. Nice, easy, relaxing trade OCGN could have been. It's not a wicked, fast-moving type of stock. It just goes to show you guys, there's multiple different trading vehicles out here. Go to whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. So just because I like to trade fast moving stocks that like to rip up dollars and fall down dollars. Some people may not feel comfortable trading those types of stocks. So you got stocks like OCGN. 
where they move nice and slow. You still get good rips on them. I mean, a dollar rip to the upside, that's nothing to shake a stick at. That's still a pretty good move. Anytime you can make a dollar per share trading these small cap stocks, that's good. So I told you guys there was a lot of stocks that popped up today really didn't hold their gains. Pola, you guys remember Pola from back in the day, P-O-L-A. This one ramped from five up over six dollars and then gave everything back. We talked about A-S-Y-S, I-I-N-N. Who remembers this one? I-I-N-N. -N. Well, this stock ran two days ago. This one ran from $2.30 all the way up to $9 a share. And in one day, look at this. I was going through and just reading the comments there for a moment. That's why I was dead air for a second for me and everybody's different i i love the one minute time frame that's why i like breaking it down the most i mean i still look at my bigger time frames like my three minute the biggest time frame on the intraday i'll look at is a 10 minute i don't really see the I don't think it's necessary for me to look at a 30 minute or an hourly or four hour chart because I'm a day trader. I'm only trading these stocks for a, maybe a few minutes at a time. So I care more about the short term trend. That's what I care about the most. I could care less about the long term trend. So most of my trades. They can range from under a minute to a couple minutes at most, maybe, maybe five, ten minutes, but that's rare. I'm a momentum trader. I trade momentum on high of day breaks, bounces, reversals. There's all different types of ways that I like to trade, but all around. I'm trading that momentum. So I-I-N-N. -N, this was the number one stock a few days ago. See that here with all the volume. And then literally the next day it turns into a ghost town. Look at all that volume disappear. Because something else pops up. It grabs everybody's attention. And everybody leaves I-I-N-N because it's not performing anymore. Remember, people love stocks that are hitting highs. People don't like stocks that pull back and they're making lows or retracing. Everybody always wants to buy stocks hitting highs. So this is where you train yourself to get away from that crowd. Study these retracements. Study when these stocks pull back for a couple days. And like I like to teach in the Discord to the Wolfpack here, see it before it happens. If you can visualize the potential, that's the smart money. 
and day in and day out when we do the pre-market prep every single morning and we go over my watch list stocks that I think have potential we're preparing for the upcoming day and we're putting out levels and looking at how much potential versus risk for all of these different stocks and right when that market opens we kick back we let these stock charts set up and then we see our game plan and our plans come together sure some of them fade out nothing happens that happens we're not going to be a hundred percent accurate but that's why we always have a handful of stocks, typically around 10 to 15 different stocks that we're observing, paying attention to, drawing out levels, and seeing how they shape out as the trading day progresses. See it before it happens. And a lot of times, we draw up our game plan we wait for it and we just look left and have it guide us when i say look left we zoom out and we look to the left of the chart and we use history to help guide the future so if i look at something like uh what was that one today well we'll look at this one dbgi so I'm zoomed in on this and I'm trying to predict if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down. I'm not trying <clears throat> I'm not trying to play a predicament game here. I'm not. I'm not here to guess if a stock's going to go up higher or guess if it's going to fail and break down lower. What I like to do is simply zoom out Look at the history and see if there's anything I can work off of in levels. So when I zoom out on DBGI and look left, there's nothing there. There's no history to go off of. So how am I supposed to know what this stock is capable of, how it likes to move? I don't have nothing to work with. So it's a guessing game. Versus, let's pull up um, that big mover, LCID. Even here, when it was accumulating and going before it ran up, when you zoom in on a day like this, and you look left, let's say you're on day two, I can look left here, as this stock is retracing, and I have levels that I can work off of, areas of interest that could potentially hold as support, and when a stock runs back up, look left, where is it going to potentially run into resistance? And the bigger time frame you see this on, the stronger it's going to be. A good starting point is going to be the daily chart and work your way down from there. So start at the daily chart and then work your way up to or down to whatever time frame you want. Hourly chart, 30 minute chart, 10 minute chart. So here with IINN, this was its first day here. Now that the stock has pulled back down, this is a better example. So now going into day three, I can look left now. Now I have levels I can build off of. One, I can look and I can see how volatile this stock was, how it, the characteristics of it, how did it like to move up? How did it like to move down? How does it like to consolidate? The range of the one minute candles that's a big one a lot of people overlook. Going back through, that's why in my videos, you guys will see me a lot of times. I'll go from 
it moved from 3 and it ripped up to 330 from 315 it ripped up to 435 i'm visually seeing and saying how much range this stock can move up and down that way when i get in on a position i'm not getting freaked out by a sudden $2 death candle or something So by looking left, it paints a picture of potential levels it could get through. It started to crack and fall down. There was a lot of resistance right here. Looks like 750. It cracked and fell down here. Looks like $5. Bottomed out here, draw a line straight across. That's oh, that's like right at four bucks. Then it came up and it was finding resistance at four fifties. Come up here when it exploded up right here and pulled back down. It was finding support right here, and then it was perking up here and it couldn't get over it. Oh look, that's four fifties. So that's probably going to be an important level. It was resistance there, support right there. It was acting as support right there. It crumbled and fell down, and then it was all resistance all right here. So 450 is going to be an important level. Agreed? There was a lot of activity that was going on there. I can see that by simply looking left and putting it together. Sure enough, stock rips up, finds resistance. At 5, pulls down, holds 450 as support right there. Now I have the confidence. I know what I know. I see it on the chart. I don't need somebody to tell me 450 is support because I can go back myself, put it together. I have the confidence in myself that I know my technical analysis game is A+. Plus. I trust in myself, right? This is where it all stems from. When you want to buy and sell stocks, confidence. 450 support rips up to 650, a $2 move. Then when it comes all the way back down, look, it found support again at 450. Rips up to 5. It kept holding 450 as support until it crumbled and fell through it right here. And then it was acting as resistance the rest of the day. That's technical analysis, guys. This shit is simple. It's simple. But yet, people just screw it up every time. It's because they don't go through and do this. They don't put the work in. When I tell you guys, go through charts. Break them down. Why did it move from here up to here? Pay attention to the details. Draw your lines out. Visually see these setups. And by doing that over and over and over and over and over and over again, you start burning these images into your head. And then when it happens real time, You'll start trusting and you know what you know because you've studied it and did your homework. And you'll have the confidence in yourself to pull the trigger and buy it because you have the conviction that you know your technical analysis game is A+. Plus and you put that work in. You've seen it time and time and time again. When you went back and broke down all those charts. But things are a lot different. Real time. Versus. At the end of the trading day. And you're going back over it and putting it all together. You ask yourself. Real time it gets frustrating. And you're nervous. You don't know how it's going to pan out. But at the end of the trading day, when you look at the chart 
and you zoom in on it and you put it together, it really makes sense when you put it all together, doesn't it? Like, wow. Yeah, this thing, I could see why it moved up like that. It broke up from here. It set up a nice wedge. It consolidated. Then it perked up to here. Yup, it showed strength at support there because it held that old resistance. Yup, and look, it, it confirmed it with all that volume that came in. It's a lot clearer when it's all done and said. Then when it goes to real time, you start second guessing yourself. And you fail miserably because of it. Because you're second guessing yourself. You don't have the confidence. Now, now you guys are starting to realize when I say you gotta just get that time in. Show up every day. I don't care if it's only for an hour, two hours, three hours. Get that time under your belt. You need it. it. All the answers lie within you. Period. And I don't care about show, showing and sharing all this information with you guys. Because I know most people are not even going to watch this. Most people are not even going to listen to this. They're all going to flock to the gurus that have 800,000 subscribers because they think they know what they're doing. Just because somebody has a huge following doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're talking about. 90% of people lose in this game. And... Traders, they guard all this stuff like it's a secret. And it's a lot of work and effort to break all this down and tell you guys that all the answers are within you. It's not this trading strategy that I'm hiding from you guys. It's not. It's all psychological, emotional, and your mental state of mind. That's it. Technical analysis. It's easy. Anybody can learn technical analysis. Because all, all we're taught to look out for are triangles, wedges, U-shapes, head and shoulders, cup and handles. It's easy. Easy. But yet, majority of people fail because they battle with themselves. And they don't even realize it. That's why you guys should be a part of the Wolf Pack here at Trading Learning 101. I'm telling you guys, just by participating in the chat every day and you're showing up, your learning curve is going to grow exponentially. You just got to put that work in. <clears throat> That was a <clears throat> that was a good one. Yeah, this was a good video. <clears throat> I appreciate the compliments, guys, and comments. Dude, I love your videos. Lyor Cohen. Well, dude, thanks for watching, man. Greatly appreciate it. Do. A Z E R T Y Y. Great explanation. No problem. What is which? My Twitch, I think I, I changed the name of it. It's Gaming with Mr. Wolf. Because I was trying to get into games there for a moment. And streaming. Just to try and grow the community more. But growing on Twitch is so hard. I still stream on Twitch. But 
there's so many girls on there wearing practically nothing with those super sensitive microphones doing like the they're licking a microphone wearing practically nothing they got like 10,000 people watching them I'm like what pretty sad super sad but I'm gonna get off here guys thanks for watching and hanging out with me if you're new to the channel here hit that subscribe button join the trading learning 101 community where we all grow as traders and investors if you enjoyed today's video and you found that there was a lot of knowledge and content and valuable content in this stream today don't be shy go through my video library i've been making content on youtube for over three years now so there's well over 600 videos on my channel it's a lot yeah i know but a lot of lessons from all of these different market cycles you see how i progress and on my journey still as a trader you never stop progressing as a trader never it's a never ending process you continuously need to work on yourself because markets change, evolve, computers get faster, algorithms change. We go through all these different cycles, different trends pop up, all that stuff. What's out, JBL? Baby ATL. All right, guys. One more day left in October. If I don't see you guys tomorrow, happy Halloween. I hope you guys end out October on a strong note. Keep in mind, we got two more months left in 2021. Let's end out this year on a strong note. Let's protect all of this year's hard work. And start preparing for a new year ahead. If you're brand new and you just got that one year in. Get ready, 2022 could be your year. Starting a new year fresh is always an exciting thing. Gotta ask yourself though, every day, how badly do you want this? I'm not pulling your guys' chain. And there's a few traders, good traders, that actually tune in and watch my content whenever I go live. They'll even tell you, this is the best job in the world. It is. It really is. This day trading, it's not a scam. It's not. People fear what they do not understand. Remember that. The key to this is understanding yourself. Most people, they don't want to learn about themselves. They don't want to continue growing. They're content with their lives. So you got to be a different breed of person to thrive in this game. Real talk. I'm not all about sitting on the couch and watching reality TV and making sure I'm all caught up with the Kardashians. No, I don't. I'm not all caught up in sports either. Not saying that sports is a bad thing. Yeah, it's all about the way you look at things. Are you happy watching somebody else play out and live their dreams? Or do you want to make your own dreams come true? Work on yourself. Get better. 
surround yourself with like-minded people? Do you hate waking up every day going to that job? I don't. Every single day I wake up, I run over to my computer and fire it up. Still to this day, I get excited every single morning. Monday is my favorite day of the week. I used to dread Mondays. Now I dread Fridays because markets are closed Saturday and Sunday. This is possible, you guys. It is. All I'll say is just do not quit. You're going to go through a lot of struggling. A lot of it. Just do not quit. I'll see you guys in the chat tomorrow. Tomorrow is live stream Friday. So Friday in the Discord, we'll all be meeting up in the trading live stream in the Discord. Look forward to seeing you guys there. We always have a good time on a Friday. So, And it's the last day of October, so let's make it a Halloween party. What do you say? All right, you guys, enjoy the rest of your evening and get fired up, especially if you're new, because life's about to change for the better. You stick with this, dedicate yourself to this, you will be rewarded. You will. How badly do you want it is the question. I'm Mr. Wolf, and as I always tell you guys, have that patience, have that discipline, study, study, study. Thank you guys for all supporting me on this channel, subscribing, tuning in. I greatly appreciate you guys, I do.